Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk and today we are on Pseudoscientist number 10 of the 12 Pseudoscientists of Christmas. Today's Pseudoscientist is a Flat Earther who doesn't like to be called a Flat Earther despite saying all the things that Flat Earthers say. I am of course talking about Level Earth Observer. Now Level Earth Observer has made a video on the final experiment which should be happening really soon. And I'm curious as to what he has to say about it because most Flat Earthers just say Oh, well, it doesn't prove anything. So let's see what he has to say. So we're weeks away from this sun observation in Antarctica. We pretty much got two scenarios here. Some people think they might try and fake it. I'm not going to go there. Well, that's actually a good start because there are some people saying that it will be fake. And I find that's a way to just dismiss the evidence so that you don't have to deal with it. I'm going to address the two scenarios here on offer. One is that the participants see a circling sun. The second scenario is the sun sets. Now should the sun set in Antarctica? Great and very interesting observation. But here's the thing, the global theory is physically impossible. And Flat Earth isn't? I mean people have been trying to come up with Flat Earth maps for years now and they still can't quite figure out a Flat Earth map that actually works. Every attempt has had some kind of shortcoming, especially when it comes to the Southern Hemisphere, seeing as a lot of Flat Earthers are based in the Northern Hemisphere. That makes Flat Earth pretty physically impossible to me, and that's not to mention the way that stars move in the night sky. So the observation doesn't really make, do, make any difference to the physicality of our Earth, doesn't. It's an interesting one, don't get me wrong, particularly if it circles the viewer. I would say that no matter what you think about the Earth, whether you think that it's a globe or whether you think that it's flat, what we see in Antarctica does have implications about the Earth. If there is a circling sun, then that is extremely difficult, if not impossible, to explain on a flat Earth. However, it is something that the globe says should happen. If it does happen, that is pretty good evidence that the Earth is a globe in addition to all the other evidence. Because bearing in mind, the globe Earth theory, like I've said, is physically impossible. Large standing bodies of water do not have the ability to display convexity upon its surface. That's a fact. There's no measurement out there showing a large standing body of water displaying convexity. Has Elio forgotten that tides exist? Like, sure, on the scale of the Earth, it is a small difference. But when it comes to how tides work, it shows that water will conform to the forces acting upon it. So that does mean that water will conform to the forces of gravity. It can curve. As for evidence of the earth curving, you know, ships disappearing over the horizon and stuff like that. We've been over this a million times already, I don't have to go over it again. It's the same with tower cranes. They don't have the ability to entertain the speeds that globe earth theory suggests it's doing. There's no demonstrations, no physical demonstrations out there to back the globe claims regarding tower cranes. Okay, so when it comes to his claims here, and Elio has been told this plenty of times before, it's not the speeds that matter, it is the acceleration. I have been on planes before and it's felt just like being in a car, yet the plane is going seven times faster than a car would. The only difference is the takeoff because that is when a plane is accelerating more than a car does. The acceleration that the Earth experiences isn't anywhere near as high as it would need to be able to have an effect on tower cranes. In fact, every physical demonstration out there proves the globe earth theory, strangely enough, is impossible. Well, every demonstration that I have seen is consistent with what you'd expect to see on a globe, especially if you know the physics. It would be a good idea for flat earthers to try and learn some basic physics and then do the calculations to work out what should actually happen on a globe. And of course, the claim is space is a vacuum and the earth is an air pressure system rock without any kind of solid separation. So this is yet another instance in which flat earthers need to learn the physics of what they're actually talking about. Because they say that pressure can't exist next to a vacuum and the reason why they say this is because pressure tends to equalise. But if that is always the case then why is there a pressure gradient in the atmosphere? Clearly there's something that is stopping the pressure from equalising which means that yes eventually if you go high enough up you will reach a vacuum. This is the case regardless of whether the Earth is flat or a globe. Problem is, every single demonstration going, showing an air pressure system reside next to a vacuum, 
shows it needs it basically requires solid separation to separate those two systems from each other or it needs a constant force that is acting upon it i mean that is how vacuum cleaners maintain a vacuum with a constant force clearly there is a constant force that is acting upon the atmosphere hence why there is a pressure gradient that's the physicality of our reality and which proves the globe earth theory is impossible well, no, that's just you not understanding physics. If I don't understand how it's even possible that things can fly, then that doesn't mean that it's impossible for things to fly. It just means that I don't understand it. That's not up for debate. People can say things, but they cannot refute what can be tested and verified by all. Elio, you seem to do a lot of saying things, so I'm just here explaining to you why you're wrong. People have shown you evidence, yet you just seem to misunderstand it completely. So should the sun set in Antarctica, it means nothing to me changes nothing about the physicality or the stance in which I've stood by for the last 10 years. So you wouldn't gain any new insight? You wouldn't have any more confirmation of your position that you can use? Should the sun circle the viewer in Antarctica? Now we get into the realms of fascinating times. Of course, globe fantasists will run away claiming a victory because they've defeated a concept through their observation. Well, no, it means that the globe has accurately predicted what should happen when the flat Earth hasn't. Being able to predict things is important in science. If your model is able to predict things, well, then it's a good model. The problem that flat earthers face is they can't seem to come up with a model in the first place, and when they do, it immediately has obvious flaws. You cannot take these people seriously at this point in time because they refuse physical reality, and when you highlight they have no physics, they say you don't understand physics. That is because you don't understand physics, Elio. Have you ever opened up a physics textbook? Have you ever done any of the calculations to validate any of the claims that you have? As for Globe Earth is not accepting reality, well, if things somehow don't pan out how we expect in Antarctica, then we will have to change our minds. I highly doubt that we're going to need to, but Globe Earthers have shown a willingness to change their mind if things aren't what we expect. Despite the fact someone like me stands by physical demonstrations that can be tested and verified by all. So you cannot take those people too seriously. But Elio, you misunderstand the implications of your observations. That's why people don't take you seriously. To make this observation a bit more scientific and give it a bit more clout, should that sun circle the viewer? They should have in place a backup plan to follow that sun and see where it goes and see where they come out. I, what? Because if they come out on the other side of a so-called globe Earth, then what is going on? Okay, so let me get this straight. You want them to follow a sun where they'd have to travel thousands of miles to get it overhead. Not only would they have to do that, they would have to go over water to do so. Do you know how ridiculous of a demand that is? Talk about things that are physically impossible, you have just demanded something that is physically impossible regardless of whether the Earth is flat or a globe. Well, it's physically impossible in the context of the experiment. If you have something that can reach supersonic speeds, then maybe, but nobody who's going has anything like that. And if someone asked me to model the sky to the ground, I can't do that. I don't have access to the sky. I don't know what those things are in the sky. I'm only a man who lives here on Earth. Okay, Elio seems to not understand that celestial navigation is a thing where you use the sky to work out where you are on the ground. If I were lost in the middle of nowhere on my own, then I could use the sun in order to gain my bearings and work out which direction is north and south. So yes, you absolutely can use the sky to find out things about the ground. I can only test and verify and cite physicality to other people who can then cross-reference what I'm citing and see that it's true. That's all I can do. Well, when people cross-reference you, you tend to be wrong, Elio. So you're not doing a very good job at it. Can one single map be responsible and correct for the ground and what goes on in the sky? Again, global believers will say the globe. Well, again, you're missing the fact that the globe concept is physically impossible. Well, here's my question to Elio. 
if the globe is impossible, then why is it so accurate? And why do flat earthers have a hard time coming up with anything that comes close in accuracy to the globe? You'd think that if flat earthers were right, they'd have an edge in being able to accurately map things out. If, like you said, they do see a circling sun, then we need to explore this place based on the fact the globe's physically impossible and the sky is doing things that can't be accounted for unless we have exploration. And you have to follow that sun. You have to follow that sun and see where it comes out. Okay, Elio, how about you do it? How about you buy a plane that can go over a thousand miles an hour just so that you can follow that sun? You make it sound so easy, so it really shouldn't be all that hard, right? Or is it suddenly difficult when you're being told to do it? Folks, be prepared for the backlash and the deluded narrative that's going to be run off the back should these globe believers and these participants see a circling sun in Antarctica. Because they're going to now claim that they've proven their globe Earth, even though they're participating in a false dichotomy. So I will admit that it is a bit of a false dichotomy. Maybe the observations actually support a donut Earth. Who knows? But in order for you to have a valid claim as to what these observations mean, then you must have a prediction for what's going to happen. If that prediction turns out to be accurate and different to what the globe predicts, then you have some evidence for your position. But you need to actually make that prediction in the first place rather than saying, oh well, if anything happens, then I'm still right. Just because one concept didn't work with your observation doesn't mean a concept that's physically impossible, the globe, suddenly becomes a reality. Well, clearly, if one of the concepts doesn't fit our observations, then that concept must be wrong because it doesn't fit with reality. So, Elio, what is your alternative explanation? The problem is the psychology at play is holding the globe believers back so much so that they act, <clears throat> unfortunately, like dishonest trolls, even the genuine people out there. I've had genuine globe believers try and slander me based on their misunderstandings on how a tower crane works. Well, there seems to be some kind of psychology here holding flat earthers back. I mean, flat earthers have had years to come up with funds to explore Antarctica themselves. Why haven't they? And more importantly, why were globe earthers so keen to go on this trip, yet flat earthers seem to be very hesitant about it? So yeah, it seems like there's some kind of psychology at play that's holding the flat earthers back. I wonder why. And also, I don't think globe earthers are misunderstanding tower cranes, I think you're misunderstanding physics. Because their, their belief system is physically impossible. They still can't see it. They need a concept to attack, which is what this whole final experiment observation is about, to destroy a concept. It's funny because what he's describing here is not only what he's like, but other flat earthers are like. They tend not to try and show that the earth is flat, but rather that the Earth is not a globe. This means that they're always trying to attack the globe rather than trying to gain evidence for their position. It's almost like the evidence for their position is sparse, so they need to go on the offense in order to convince anyone. Crazy times, I'll tell you. Like I said, follow that sun in an aeroplane or go over, fly over Antarctica. I mean, there was one person a while back who did offer to fly people over Antarctica, but that didn't get funding. Flat Earthers seem to have a problem with putting their money where their mouth is, and instead would rather just attack the globe. But anyway, that is it for this video. Leave a like and subscribe if you like this video, and leave a comment letting me know who you think the next pseudoscientist is going to be. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Tony C, Rashina Keller, Ray, Kid Vicious, definitely not NASA, Maury, Kaylee, and Fist Wizard. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon, there should be a link there, or you could buy me a coffee. I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.